You are listening to continuing coverage of the trial of Chad Daybell from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Let's go back to the courtroom. Oops, somebody moved, somebody moved my tape and messed me up. So what we have, if we start on this exhibit, we have Chad and Lori meeting sometime in late November. Is that correct? Uh, October. I mean, October. Excuse me, October. That's correct. I did the same thing. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Give me a couple of mulligans today, too, would you? You do the same for me. I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have an agreement, okay? <laughs> Um, and then we have uh, the date of Charles Vallow's um, being killed by Alex Cox. Is this, you see that? Yes, sir. And as part of the sharing of information, you are aware that Chad Daybell is not criminally implicated in the murder of Charles Vallow, correct? Uh, I'm not sure on that. Oh, okay. So the purpose of putting on that was to document, but uh, 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 you haven't been shared any information that Chad Daybell is not criminally implicated in the murder of uh, Charles Valor, or you were provided a prosecutor's report noting that? No. Okay. Um, then the next one you have is they moved to Rexburg, JJ, Alex, and Tylee, Lori, correct? Correct. Tylee goes missing. JJ goes missing. Uh, then we go to the attempted shooting of Brandon Boudreaux. And once again, um, I noted that uh, you put two items on here. One, obviously, with the Charles Vallow, but the other one was Brandon Boudreau. Are you aware that Chad Daybell is not criminally implicated in the shooting of Brandon Boudreau? Objection, Your Honor. Move to strike counsel's testifying. Sustained. Are you aware as to whether or not Chad Daybell is implicated in the shooting of Brandon Boudreau? I'm not. Okay. And then you have Tammy's uh, passing, Chad married, and then as far as Alex Cox is concerned, do you have any information as to um, the cause of death of Alex Cox? Um, no, not with me. Okay. Well, do you have any information as part of your investigation with all of these multiple agencies as to what caused Alex Cox to pass away? No, I would say that was probably not my scope on this one. Okay. But you included it on your timeline, right? I included all three of those on this timeline. Right. Well, you've just jumped ahead of my question, but thank you. Okay. And just very quickly, uh, you noted that, uh, uh, was that the date, the 26th of 2018, that Chad and Lori first met? Uh, that's what I believe. That's what I've given. So when you put down the uh, 30th of 2018, um, Chad doing some searches, do you find it particularly unusual that two people who find themselves enamored with each other would Google search each other? Uh, no, no, I don't. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I will get this eventually. <laughs> so on November 16th and 17th, uh, there's been some previous testimony about Chad, Chad traveling to Mesa, Arizona for a preparing the people conference. You noted that he stayed with Lori in her residence. Are you aware of who, uh, who the other people that also stayed with Lori at the residence were? I uh, not off the top of my head. I don't, but you're aware that the Chad was not staying just exclusively with Lori at the residence that day, right? I don't think I can testify to that. Okay. So you don't have any knowledge or as part of your many groups of, uh, who provided you information, they didn't happen to mention that, uh, um, Chad didn't stay there exclusively with Lori, right? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. On the, um, May 7th to May, May 5th through 7th, the search for Malachite rings. Did you have any emails or text message disgusting whether or not both of them admired or had a reason for searching Malachite rings? Um, not that I remember. Okay. Or did you take a, the time and effort to research what the purpose is behind Malachite rings? I do remember reading that. I don't know if I could speak to it today on what that okay. meant. Would it uh, jar your recollection if there was some reference to the healing powers of Malachite? Does that refresh any way your recollection? No. Okay. Now, we see an email from Charles to Tammy, and um, this is June 29th of 20, 2019, right? Yes. And at that point, um, we don't know particularly through your investigation when Lori and Chad began seriously this, this affair, do we? No, sir. We can't pin it to a specific day, can we? I cannot. But we know at this point something's up, right? I think that's fair. Okay. 
And at this point, it appears that by way of this text message, Charles has discovered something. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Now, do you have any information that shows that any evidence that you've been provided through these numerous agencies that Tammy Daybell blocked Charles' uh, email to her? That Tammy Daybell blocked? Say that again? Did Tammy ba- Daybell block Charles from emailing her anymore? Do you have any information to that effect? I do not, no. Okay. Did any law enforcement agency or anybody otherwise, through your network of officers helping you, provide you information to that effect? No. Okay. Now, these emails in, in general um, talk partly about the uh, Elena and... Uh, James story, correct? Yes. And uh, at the very top where it says July 14th of 2019, you know, could you read what you wrote at the very top on the right hand, uh, at the very top of that split screen? Uh, where it says Chad writes a romantic yes. sex slash sexual story, James and Elena and sends it to Corey. Okay. Chad writes romantic sexual story, James and Elena and sends it to Lori. So the way you perceive this is Chad was writing a romantic sexual, and we can't deny that, right, to to Lori, correct? I think that's fair. And in no way is this reflecting that uh, because they're having an affair and he's writing her a romantic letter, that it has anything to do with the murder of two or three people, right? No, I don't. I don't agree with that. Okay. Where in this letter does it show, let's kill some kids? Yeah, you're not going to find that in there. Okay, and you're not going to find that in any emails, are you, sir? Probably not. Okay, thank you. This is a text from Lori to Chad, uh, letting him know that uh, she talked to the insurance company. Do you see that? I do. You agree with that? I agree with what? That she talked, that she's telling Chad, I talked to the insurance company? Yes. Okay. Do you agree that he? she told him he, meaning uh, Charles, changed it in March? Yes. Okay. And then at the last sentence of her text, she says something. Would you read that for me? I'll still. I'll stick. I will. I'll still get the 4,000 a month in SS. Okay. And at this point, um, Tylee's still alive to your knowledge, right? Yes. JJ's still alive to your knowledge, right? Yes. Tammy's still alive to your knowledge, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And Lori Vallow is talking about the fact that, uh, with Charles, Charles dead, she's getting four thousand. And do you know what the four thousand is from? Uh, four thousand a month in Social Security is what I'm based on this text. Okay. Would that be for the death for the help support the children? I'm not sure what that's for. Okay. On July thirtieth, two thousand nineteen, Chad sent Laurie a text, um, something about releasing a little steam. Do you see that? Yes, sir. And then he talks. To, and and would you read going from anyway? Anyway. This, through the first two or three sentences, please. Okay. Anyway, this is a chart that checks what percentage mortals are still in their body. It worked for my friend's wife who died, my neighbor, George Bush, Stan Lee, etc. I kind of forgot about it because I've been dealing with zombies and demonic entities. Okay. So he's talking about some sort of a chart that other of his neighbors used. Does, do you see that? Yes. Did you ever find that chart? Specifically to the chart he's talking about, I, I'm not sure what that chart would look like, or I haven't seen that chart that he's talking to. Okay. So by term of this, apparently he makes reference to that there being some sort of a chart out there. Um, do you know if that chart is affiliated with any specific religion? Again, I don't know what chart you're talking about. Okay. Well, the one about percentage mortals... Are still in their body. That's the chart I'm talking about. I'm not. I'm not going to speculate. I don't know which one you're talking about, sir. Okay, that's okay. And then what we have here is um, from Lori to Zaluma, right? And and Zaluma to Chad. Yes, sir. In guards of uh, Lori it appears and Chad are um, using Zaluma to sort of give them an alibi to get together, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> and. Um, is that something that's particularly unusual if two people are having an affair and they find a close patriot to set up a rendezvous that they know maybe shouldn't be going on? In this case? I'm not talking about this case. I'm talking I've, about in general. In this Objection, case. Objection, Your Honor. I think that calls for speculation and is irrelevant. Sustained on relevance. Now, you talked about the, um, the Grendel gun, correct? Yes, sir. 
And if we were talking in the context of a hunting rifle, it's not unusual to scope something out at 100, then go to 200, and then maybe out to 300, correct? Correct. Okay. And um, someone who's a gun aficionado, it would not be unusual to, 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 to score your scope so that you know how accurate that gun is, correct? That is correct. Did you read or review all of the evidence as it relates to the paintball incident with Tammy Daybell? I believe so. Do you know how many times the word paintball was mentioned in all of the documentation related to Tammy Daybell? No, sir, I don't. Are you aware of the uh, Google search that Tammy Daybell did on her computer identifying the gun that she uh, thought was being held in the person's hand? No. Okay. So the issue with this Grendel is you are suggesting as a possibility that maybe it could have been a gun that uh, someone was using with Tammy Dable. Is that fair? Yes. Instead of a paintball gun? 100% fair. Okay. Well, 100% fair, but you don't know whether it was a paintball gun or a rifle, do you, that day? I believe it was a Grendel. Okay. And you believe it was a Grendel, but you weren't there, were you? No, sir. I was not. And you didn't go through all of the evidence that you just testified to to determine exactly what gun it was. You're going off of what you believe. You're invoking your personal opinion, aren't you? Objection, Your Honor. This is argumentative and it's asked and answered. Sustained. In this exhibit, you talked about that there were some messages between Alex Cox and Chad Daybell. Is that right at this time? Yes, sir. And this is on the 9th, correct? It is. That's the paintball incident day? Correct. Okay. Now, again, you noted that there were text messages, but you Again, didn't put that into context of how many other text messages on a daily basis these folks talk, did you? Correct. Okay. And when you look at this chart, what sort of uh, data were you deriving this information from? Was it a Wi-Fi, Google, or what was it? This was provided to me from the FBI CAST report. Okay. So when you look at those squares, are you familiar with how CAST reports work? I'm familiar enough to read that report. Okay, but you don't know the. You're not an expert on this on this information, are you? That's a fair statement, sir. <laughs> and you would rely on the experts to provide this information to you, correct? I would. And at that point, uh, you would read it and interpret it the way you see it, correct? I would read it the way they told me. Oh, so someone told you that the that Alex and Chad were near each other on that day? Their devices were. Okay. Now I'm looking at the the ranges the purple and the, the green, and those would represent the towers, correct? I think the key does say, I actually think those are phone numbers, what you're looking at. Okay. So when you say near each other, uh, are you aware of how far Alex Cox's apartment is to the BYU library? I'm not off the top of my head, no, sir. When you look at that chart, are you able to determine that the range of that encompasses the BYU library? Off of this? Yes. I can't tell, no, sir. Okay. But you can't also say that when the devices were near each other, you can't even tell me how close they were to each other, can you? Uh, they were sufficiently close. Um, I couldn't probably off the top of my head. You couldn't, could you? No, sir. Yeah. You talk about eight text messages between Alex and Chad Daybell. Um, and again, we'll go back to the fact that you didn't look at the ordinary course of how often they communicated, correct? Frequently on a daily basis. Objection, Your Honor. Ask and answer. Sustain. Did you check as to whether or not any of these messages were duplicates? Uh, I can't say that, that I did right away off the top of my head. I'd have to be refreshed. I don't know. Okay. Do you recall, did you did you check whether or not as part of the phone records that they were counting some of these phone phone messages twice? Yeah, I can't answer that. Okay. You're not you're not qualified or equipped to do that, correct? Right now, no. Yeah. And we'll eventually get the hang of this someday. I think I may have put the wrong one up. To the October 9th? I think I put the wrong one up. Judge, could I just have a moment? Yes. I did put the wrong one up. Excuse me. We're going to start a different area first, okay? Okay. So they, um, on October 9th, um, that was the day that Tammy Daybell was, was allegedly shot with either a paintball gun or, as you seem to think, some sort of a rifle, right? She was not shot. Shot at. 
shot at. Correct. And then October 11th, um, what's that first sentence say? How to what? How to drill baffles to make a suppressor. Okay. So I guess my question is, is that if Tammy Debo was shot at on the 9th, why is someone looking how to make a suppressor on a gun if they were shot at by a suppressor two days earlier? You're asking my, is that a question for me? Sure. If he discarded a suppressor, has a new one, needs to make a new one, there's a number of reasons why you'd look for a new suppressor. Yeah. Or there's also a reason that you didn't know how to use a suppressor when you were learning for the first time, right? I think that's evident that he didn't know how to use this weapon from the beginning. Okay. So we had to learn two days after Tammy Daybell's shooting how to use a suppressor, correct? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Sustained. Okay. And then two days after uh, the alleged shooting of Tammy Daybell by the paintball gun, or as you suggest, a rifle, there's a reference to a Dodge Coda steel body thickness, right? Yes, sir. And you mentioned that the Daybells have a, a Dodge Dakota? They did at that time, yes, sir. Okay. Do you know what year they have? It is a different year. I believe it's a, I believe it's a 2004. Okay. But uh, still talking about the thickness of a steel body of a Dodge Dakota. Correct. Okay. And the doors on the Dodge Dakota. Yes, sir. The gauge steel are the, uh, what gauge steel is what they're doing? And then how thick is 22 gauge? Do you see that? I do. Okay. And then further below on October 11th, there's the one in between, which is of interest to me, how to build your own silencer, right? Correct. And that's two days after Tammy was shot, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, oh my goodness. Let me get this stuff. There we go. Okay. Not perfect. So then the second paragraph, um, Alex's phone does not provide data from 1045 until 1153 when it is seven minutes from the LDS church on Highway 20. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. But then up above, it says Alex is near the Daybell residence. And how far is he away? 2.6 miles away. And he's at that residence from, is that 10.07 to 10.45? Yes. So then he leaves the, is it your testimony that he leaves the LDS church at 10.45? And you don't have any data from... 1045 to 1153 until, um, was, I guess it's at 1153. He's seven minutes away from the church on highway 20. Is that what you're saying? No. Go ahead. Explain to me. So what's your question again? Are you said 1153 was when it la was the last time. And when it started providing data again, which was seven minutes away from the LDS church. Okay. But from 1045 to 1153, we don't know the whereabouts of Alex Cox. Would that be fair? That's fair. Or his phone. And excuse me, we should talk about it as his phone, shouldn't we? I don't think we know where Alex Cox is at that point. I think that was a fair question the first time. We know where is his phone, right? We don't know. His where phone is at the church. Uh, up until what time? Well, it provides data from until 1153. Well, seven minutes prior to that. Well, I'm, I'm, and please forgive me. I'm reading that a little different, and that's where I'm having some confusion. The second paragraph, and if you would just read that entire paragraph for me. So Alex's phone does not provide data from 10.45 p.m. until 11.53, when it is seven minutes away from the LDS church on Highway 20. So when reading that, we don't know where Alex Cox's data was from 10.45 to 11.53, correct? His, his, his phone. phone. His phone. Correct. Okay, but we do know from 10.07 to 10.45, his phone was binging at the LDS church 2.6 miles away, right? Correct. Okay, and that's, I'm just trying to clarify yeah. that. Thank you. I think we didn't clarify it. But. So I, I look at this um, chart, and what was of some interest to me is that you mentioned... Objection, Your Honor. Move to strike that statement. Sustained. Let's look at the bottom line, the fourth from the bottom line at 1146. What does that notation read? Alex phone leaves the LDS church parking lot. And then we'll go back to the original exhibit... Now, you previously put in your report that at 1146, he left the church parking lot. On this notation, on the second paragraph, it seems to suggest that 1153, he's seven minutes away from the church. Which is it? Well, if you back 1153 off of seven. Okay. 1153 gets you to 1146, right? Seven yeah. minutes off? Yeah. But you're saying that there's no data 
of Alex's whereabouts from 1045 to 1153. So how do you know he's at the church if there's no data? It's his phone's not providing data. It's, it's sitting. It's not moving. Well, you don't know that, do you? I was told that by the cast. Okay. So in other words, the story from which cast? The FBI? Correct. So the FBI told you that the phone is sitting there, correct? Correct. Okay. So if I understand correctly, then, that the um, um, based on what you were told by the FBI, that from 1045 until 1153, well, 1045 to 1146, um, Alex Cox was non-mobile and was in the same location for an hour at the LDS church, correct? Objection, Your Honor. This has been asked and answered. No. It's overruled. Well... You said it was 1146, right, in your report, the yellow report? Do we need to see that one again? No. Ask your question again. Why don't you read the first line of the second paragraph up until the word seven minutes away? Objection, Your Honor. This has been asked and answered, and it's argumentative. I am going to sustain that, Mr. Pryor. It has been asked and answered. Okay. So is it your position that Alex Cox's phone was not at, Alex Cox's phone was not at the LDS church from 1045 to 1153? His phone was... Not mobile at the LDS church. His phone was again, I'm sorry, what? Sorry, you said something too. Yeah. Say the question again. Is it your testimony that Alex Fox Cox's phone was not mobile from 1045 to 1153 at the LDS church? Objection, what? Your Honor. Ask and answered. Overruled. You can answer. It's not providing data. Okay. There's a discussion about insurance on this particular slide. Is that right? Yes, sir. And that, uh, could you read under September 8th, the, the two su- sentences below are just next to September 8th, 2019, starting with Tammy's? September 8th, 2019, Tammy's life insurance through Allard Insurance from the school was raised to 50000 She raised her individual amount from, uh, from 10000 to a max of 80000 for a total of 130000 Okay. And then obviously there was a claim for that, correct? Yes, sir. And then uh, there was... Here is a comment on October 31, 2019, that Chad received and deposited 300000 life insurance from Primerica, right? Yes, sir. Do you have any knowledge as part of the number of agencies involved in this investigation when Chad and Tammy Dabel opened up that life insurance policy? Uh, it's on this slide, March 19th of 2002. Okay, I don't see that on the slide. I'm sorry. It's at the top. Okay, uh, you're right. I'm sorry. I missed that. I'm sorry. It's okay. You had mentioned earlier about a number of um, uh, text messages. The prosecutor asked you about the content of a number of text messages. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. What was the range he was talking about in those text messages where there was no content? Um, specific. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Say that again. There were a number of text messages where the prosecutor asked you about not being, not having any content in some of those text messages. Correct? Okay. Yes, sir. And do you recall which device and what was the range that you were not provided content of text messages? There were a number of text messages that we didn't get the content for. Some we got, some we did not. Okay. So specifically, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Okay. Well, you answered my question. Thank okay. you. But good. <laughs> the, um, the issue is then, isn't it true then that we don't know what those folks were talking about, do we? No, sir. We don't. We don't know what the discussion centered around, do we? I believe I know. Well, how do you know if there's no content? My training and experience in this overall case. Okay. So basically you're speculating, isn't it true, of what the content may be because it aids you in supporting your theory of the case. Isn't that true? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Sustained. I have nothing else, Judge. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. All right, Ms. Blake. Thank you, Your Honor. Investigator Edwards, you were asked about the fact that you focus in on specific days in looking at phone calls. Do you recall that? I do. Was there a reason that you focused in on the days you did? I did. And why was that? Because there were significant events that occurred around each of those days. And Your Honor, may I have the paper exhibit 398? I'm not sure. Mr. Pryor may still have it. It's just... I could. This is just the accurate copy. Here we go. Mr. Bailiff, will have you retrieve that and submit that to the state, please? And if I may have permission to publish from the paper, Exhibit 398. You may. And I guess I'd like a little clarification on the record about your comment, Ms. Blake, for 
purpose of instructing the jurors here what you meant when you said accurate copy? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, the state had um, provided this particular exhibit in jump drive format. There were a few modifications that had been made to the exhibit. There were other copies that had been printed out that did not contain those uh, accurate changes. This particular printout does have those accurate changes contained within it. Okay. Thank you. And I just wanted to clarify that nothing that was presented or published in Cross was what you deem an inaccurate part of the exhibit. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. And I appreciate that clarification. This paper copy is an exact replica of the jump drive that was presented in the direct examination. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Blake. And that's still going to have a little bit of a glare. But was this one of the days that you had determined had significance to your investigation? Yes, ma'am. And on here, there's an indication of when the attempted shooting of Tammy Daybell occurred. Do you see that? I do. Before and after that, who was having contact by text message? Alex and Chad. Chad and Alex. And this is around the time that Chad Daybell's wife had been shot at. Correct. Did you determine these particular dates of October 18th and 19th of 2019 to have significance? Yes. And on this, do you see an indication of Chad having contact with Lori? Yes. Do you see indications of Chad having contact with Alex? Yes. And is this around the time or right before Tammy Daybell is pronounced dead? Yes. You were asked about a determination that Chad and Lori were engaged in an affair? Yes. Is that what the investigation led you to believe? Yes. Do you recall when Alex shot Charles? The July... 19th, I believe, 2019. And would it ha- could it have been July 11th of 2019? Yes. And Charles was married to Lori, is that correct? Correct. Is it your belief based on the investigation or your understanding that Chad and Lori were already engaged in an affair? Yes. And do you recall again the day Tammy was pronounced dead? I do. And when was that? October 19th. Do you recall where her body was discovered? In the Daybell residence. Do you recall specifically that it was in... Bed. Bedroom. What's the connection between Tammy Daybell and Alex Cox? Chad Daybell. And do you know where Lori Vallow's children's remains were discovered? I do. Judge objection goes beyond the scope. Overall. Where was that? Daybell property. I have no further questions. All right. Thank you. That concludes the testimony then of Investigator Edwards. At this point, counsel, I'd like a brief Sidebar to discuss scheduling, please. All right. Thank you, counsel. Uh, We discussed scheduling, and I just want to advise the jurors of where things stand. It has been told to the court that the state's got one additional witness in their case in chief. That witness is not, we wouldn't be able to get done with today. They're going to take longer than the time we've got remaining. So the state will be calling one additional witness tomorrow. Uh, That will likely lead to a shortened day tomorrow if the state does, in fact, rest its case in chief, where the court will have some other issues to take up outside of the jury presence. So at this point, I'm letting the jurors know that we are going to conclude for the day. And in addition, tomorrow will likely be a shortened day. And then we'll have some additional specific detail to give the jurors tomorrow in terms of the proposed schedule of the trial moving forward at this point. Uh, Does that accurately represent where the state is on its case in chief? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Any questions about that, Mr. Pryor? No questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, then thank you again for your attentiveness today. We'll go ahead and conclude for today, returning for additional testimony with the state's final witness on its case in chief to start tomorrow morning at 830. Again, thank you for following the admonishment I give you each day as you go home. Do not discuss the case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. Please don't do anything to research or look the case up, and we'll have you sign your juror affirmations when you arrive in the morning. And with that, we will conclude for the day. Thank you. All rise, please. There's more to come in the trial of Chad Daybell. Press subscribe so you don't miss any of our continuing coverage right here from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast.